We're going to get the details of the case now from the SEC. Uh, it's Enforcement Director Robert Kuzami, who joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Robert, it is good to have you here on Street Smart. Uh, this is a case that is very similar in terms of the deal that we're talking about to the Goldman deal that was called Abacus. But I was hoping you could give us some more details about what's similar and what's different in those two cases. Well, uh, look, it is similar in the sense that uh, investors in this CDO um, uh, bought into the product, uh, hoping that it would perform and expecting that an independent collateral manager was going to select uh, the portfolio and the assets according to their expertise. Um, and in both cases, what the investors didn't know is that somebody with interests adverse to them was, um, was playing a role in selecting the portfolio. In Goldman, it was uh, Paulson and company. Uh, here in the Citigroup case, um, it was Citigroup itself, which took the short position uh, on the assets and had a significant hand in selecting the portfolio. So in both cases, investors were misled because persons with interests adverse to their economics um, had a hand in the deal, which was contrary to what was disclosed in the offering materials. Now, I know this is the third largest penalty that's been meted out since the financial crisis in a case like this one. But the deal itself was a billion dollars. The settlement was for two hundred and eighty five million. How did that how did you come to that number? Well, the uh, the two hundred eighty five million dollars that Citigroup pays uh, represents disgorgement of one hundred and sixty million, which is what they earned on the deal from their structuring fees and their short position. $30 million in interest and then a nearly $100 million penalty. So really, uh, while the overall CDO was a billion dollars, all that Citi earned on the short position was $160 million. Now, Citigroup, as part of the settlement, admits no wrongdoing. Was there a point in time in which you potentially considered criminal charges? Well, the SEC can't bring criminal charges. We don't have that uh, jurisdiction. That's the uh, authority of the Department of Justice, and uh, you'll have to ask them that question. Are there other cases like this that are ongoing at this point or you expect uh, will start at some point soon? Well, we've brought uh, a large number of cases arising out of the credit crisis, nearly, uh, nearly 40 cases, nearly 40 uh, uh, CEOs, CFOs and other high ranking executives, um, nearly $2 billion in recovery. Uh, and so we continue to, to aggressively look at the area, but I'm afraid I can't comment beyond that. All right. There were. I, I was looking at a report this morning from an analyst at Miller Tabak, Thomas Mitchell. He was estimating that investors lost between 440 billion and 585 billion between 2004 and 2008. At what point do you not look back any longer? Well, we continue to look back uh, as uh, as long as we can uh, under the statute of limitations that uh, control uh, how how long after misconduct we can file an action. So we really don't have. Um, uh, a barrier other than that. Um, and we've been aggressively and thoroughly looking at uh, matters arising out of the financial crisis for a couple of years now. Let's keep in mind that obviously not all losses in the financial crisis resulted from uh, fraud and misconduct. Um, and so uh, uh, we can't uh, sue people based on poor judgment or poor risk management uh, policies or procedures or investments that performed badly. Uh, we are focused on fraud and misconduct. To, when is the statute of limitations over? Well, the statute of limitations generally run five years, although um, they can be told or extended under various circumstances. All right, Robert, we have to end it there. Do appreciate you joining us here today on Street Smart with an update. That was Robert Kuzami, the SEC's enforcement director.